Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna do a sheet metal tutorial. And I think it's the perfect time to do a sheet metal tutorial because in two weeks, I'm gonna be doing a live stream filled with sheet metal tips and tricks. So I hope that you'll join me live on March 28th at 10 a.m. But if you can't make it at that time, it's okay because the video is gonna stay live right here on the YouTube channel. I'll include a link below and let's get into it today with a sheet metal challenge. This one's gonna come from our 3D modeling practice playlist. We're gonna scroll down here until we find this challenge down here. It's called Metal Clip. It is 21-01-02 and it looks a little something like this. Ow. So we're gonna get into it here in just a moment by coming up with a game plan for this challenge. But before we do, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Solid Box. If you guys are ever in need of some serious computer hardware to run your professional CAD or CAM workstation, you wanna check out mysolidbox.com. And if you go over to the products page, you'll be able to go through and make sure that you find a computer that's appropriate for the type of work you do. But beyond that, the team at Solidbox will take that computer in-house, they'll make some tweaks to Windows, they'll make some tweaks to the BIOS, and they'll really try to make sure that that system is optimized for a professional CAD or CAM user. So again, the next time you or your team is in the market to get some new computer hardware, be sure to check out mysolidbox.com. That team will absolutely take care of you and you'll probably become a customer for life. And so a huge thank you to the team at Solidbox who's really helped out this season with these practice models and with these tutorials videos. Now, if you wanna to try to complete this practice model challenge, I'll include a link down below in the description to this particular challenge. And what you can do is as soon as you get started, you can hit play and you can start the clock here. Maybe you can uh, challenge me, see if you can come up with a faster time than what I come up with. But whenever I am looking at a, a 2D print, whether it's a production print or even if it's just a napkin sketch, what I like to do is kind of look over the whole scope of the project and come up with a basic game plan. And so one of the first things that jumps out at me is it looks like this is a sheet metal part. It's got a default wall thickness of two millimeters and a default bend radius of two millimeters. And so I'm probably gonna be creating features like this with what's called the edge flange command. But this particular edge flange is gonna be a little tricky because the edge flange is gonna come up but then it's gonna kind of come over at an angle so I'm gonna end up using what's called the edit sketch functionality for that edge flange and I think that's probably the most tricky part of this particular design but I think as far as game plan goes I'll probably start out by creating a, a base flange tab here kind of capturing this overall footprint of the part it looks like that footprint is 30 millimeters wide here by 100 millimeters so 30 by 100 for that general footprint. And then after I have that general footprint, then I should be able to create that edge flange coming up. Like I said, I'll edit the sketch of the edge flange to give me that angle. And then I should be able to create these final tabs that are sticking off the side here. I'll probably also opt to just do half of the model and then mirror it at the end. So that's kind of my basic game plan. Um, I think I, I, you know, I have a pretty good plan going into this. I know I took about 90 seconds there to come up with that game plan, but I just think it, it's a good way to set yourself up to speed through the rest of this. So. Uh, let's see if I can make up some time now, now that I've got that basic game plan down. So I'm going to switch over to my mouse and keyboard cam so you guys can all see what I'm doing with my hands here. And let's get into it by starting a new document. This is going to be using uh, plain carbon steel and millimeters. That's what's called out on the title block. And then I'm going to S key, create a rectangle here and use the auto dimensions to create a rectangle at 30 wide by 100. Whoops, I put in the dimensions in the wrong direction there. Let me just switch those. So that's 30 by 100. So much for making up time uh, <laughs> as I go through here. And then I'm gonna make that midpoint so that basically the front edge of the part is centered here right on the origin. And then I'm gonna go to my sheet metal tools. Now, if you don't have your sheet metal tools, you can right mouse button, go to tabs, and then turn on your sheet metal tools. So right mouse button, tabs, sheet metal. And I'm gonna say that I want this to be a base flange tab. And now at this point, I'm gonna say that I want that to use a default wall thickness of two millimeters. And I'm gonna have that one come in the up direction rather than the down direction by using reverse direction here. And that's just because I noticed that some of the dimensions are coming from the base of the part here. So I just think it makes sense for that to be essentially coplanar to my top plane. So I'm gonna have that come up to two millimeters. And normally here, I would also define the default bend radius at two, but it doesn't look like it's showing up here. So let's just go on and see what happens next. And so the next feature that I would create here would be, I would click this edge and then I would go into the edge flange command. Well, at this point, 
point, I can see that the default radius is showing up as three rather than two. So this is a problem, right? We, we don't wanna be constantly having to change that back to two. And so this is a little pro move when you're in sheet metal. If your very first sheet metal feature doesn't have any bends on it, then you're not gonna get the option to input the default radius. And so what you'll do is you'll right mouse button on this folder here the sheet metal folder, your right mouse button, you go to edit feature, and now you can input the default bend radius. So I'm gonna change that to a bend radius of two, enter, enter, and now I'm gonna go back to my edge flange functionality and click on this edge here, and now when we look, we can see that it is now defaulting to a bend radius of two, and so we are good to go, good to move on with this design. Now, the next thing that I want to take note of is what's called my flange position. So if I go here to an end view, and then I start adjusting this flange position here, I'm not sure why this box is showing up here is black. I'll just, I don't know, it's just like a weird box that was showing up. So flange position, uh, I'm gonna change this flange position here to, you know, you've got position one, uh, position two, position three, position four here. Uh, this flange position is gonna be very important to understand. It's always very important to understand flange position with sheet metal, but it looks like in this particular model, the flange is starting kind of right here, right at that point of tangency. So that bend is starting right at the edge of this 30 millimeter wide section of the part. So that means that my flange position is gonna be bend outside. So it'll be this third option here, bend outside. So now the bend radius is correct. The flange position is correct. The only thing left for me to do is up Update this sketch. So I'm going to say edit flange profile. And then here's another little trick with sheet metal. When you when you do a convert entities and you convert just this edge, the end of that edge is essentially a soft relationship. And so what I mean is it shows up in black, which normally would mean fully constrained. But if you just click and drag that edge over, you can actually break that relationship. So I can just drag that edge over and that's going to be at a distance of 30. There we go. And then I can select this top edge here and delete the horizontal relationship so that I can drag that line up. And that needs to be at an angle of 32 degrees. And then the final dimension that I'm looking for here is defined down here in the, uh, what looks like the side view, 45 to start of bend. So this gets us into another one of these scenarios where we really have to understand the idea of uh, flange location, flange position. But in this case, we can see that it looks like that dimension is coming right here, right to the tangency point once again, to the start of the bend. So that's gonna mean that I can just create that sketch to that same dimension. So that sketch is gonna show up here with a distance of 45 from the base giving us a nice fully defined sketch for that edge flange. And now I can click on that edge and go into another edge flange. Once again, I'm just gonna quick, you know, kind of do a sanity check here, make sure that that's showing up at two millimeters and it is. But then I'm also gonna come down here and look at my flange position and make sure that I'm getting my bend to the outside because uh, that dimension was defined to the start of the bend here. So that all looks pretty good. I think that at this point, I'm ready to go into my edit flange profile. And I am gonna end up mirroring this geometry at the end so I'm going to use this little trick that I showed in one of my power moves with the idea of a, a double dimension and then a mirror downstream so I'll create a double dimension here that comes across and that's going to give me this 110 dimension which is called out here in the uh, top view so here you can see I've got this 110 dimension here and I was able to create that using that double dimension all right so I'm going to finish that sketch and now just a couple of chamfers on the edge of that thing. So I'll go into my S key here, chamfer, and this looks like it's gonna be eight millimeters by 45 degrees. So we'll do a chamfer and a chamfer. And then I'm going to do a uh, slot. Looks like it's a slot sketch here for this, this hole. So it's like the face, begin a sketch, orient the view and create a slot like so. And I do have some auto dimension showing up there when I create a slot. Looks like this one is supposed to be 12 and this one here is supposed to be six. And once I've created that geometry, the only thing left to do is to locate this relative to the front of the part, which is 14 millimeters to that front arc of the part. And then there is another opportunity here to use a double dimension because the center to center on those slots is being called out as 80 millimeters, probably to match to some other part uh, which has an 80 millimeter center to center. So there we go. And now I can S key extrude. And if you use this option here in sheet metal for link to thickness, whatever the wall thickness is of the part, the depth of the cut extrude will always be the same. It's pretty handy in sheet metal, especially if you find yourself regularly switching the wall thickness of the sheet metal design. 
So for my last feature here, I will do a cut extrude. So I'll do S key, uh, make a circle here, give that circle a diameter of 12 millimeters and a distance from the front of the part of 16 millimeters. And then that is gonna also be vertical to the origin just to make sure that I get fully defined every time. And then I will S key extrude cut and once again, use that option for link to thickness. And now this is a little trick that I like to use whenever I anticipate mirroring a part. It's especially useful with sheet metal. I will pick the plane that I wish to mirror about, and then I will go to the command insert cut with surface. And this little arrow here defines which direction the cut is gonna be in, but ultimately I'm gonna cut this entire part using that surface. And that really sets me up nicely to go into a feature mirror command, pick this face to mirror, and then choose bodies to mirror. And once I choose to mirror that body, the sheet metal merges back together and it is a legitimate sheet metal, meaning that it can be flattened. So I think at this point, we are pretty much good to go. I'll do what's called the final spin, where I roll this part around and kind of look over the part. And at that point, I'm gonna to go to evaluate mass properties. And there we go, 114 grams, whoops, 100 and 114 grams and so I'm gonna come over to my drawing and I'm gonna stop the clock and once I stop the clock there it looks like I'm at 9 minutes and 11 seconds and so now I'm gonna go to the very end of the uh, drawing here and when I get to the end of the drawing, I can see that the correct answer is 114 grams. So I did get it correct. And at this point I could go down into the comments and I could say, add a comment and I could say, Hey, Toby, I got it done in nine minutes and 11 seconds using SolidWorks. So that's going to do it for our tutorial today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. I want to say thanks again so much to our sponsor today, SolidBox. The next time you're in the market for some new hardware, be sure to visit mysolidbox.com. And I wanted to remind everybody that on March 28th, I will be hosting a live stream chock full of tips and tricks in the wonderful world of SolidWorks sheet metal. So hopefully I will see you all there. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.